Subscribe. Ultimate Halo. I'm getting too old for this. Hey up lads and lasses, Fletch here from Ultimate Halo and thank you so much for tuning in. I would appreciate all if you could subscribe because it's my birthday on Saturday and you want to make Fletch happy on his birthday, right? Anyway, let me know in the comment section down below if there's one thing that you could bring back from any Halo game in the original trilogy, what would it be? So to the meat of this video, or Quan if you're a veggie, <laughs> I'm so funny. Uh, the first time you stepped foot on a Halo ring was 2007. Just let that sink in. So you've been playing Halo games for all of these years, but we haven't stepped foot in a new Halo game since that year. And for those of you who do need your memory jogging, this was at the end of Halo 3 on the final mission, aptly called Halo, and you were running to escape for your life whilst you're blowing this thing up as you do, because you master chief, to save the Milky Way galaxy once again. But why exactly is that important? Well, the thing is, many new fans may have never stepped foot on a ring, and seeing the arc in the sky is still a very unique experience, even if you've seen it time and time and again, much like lots of us have when we landed on the Halo ring on Combat Evolved for that first time. It stimulates the imagination of the player. And one of the things that I did think about quite a lot is that on Earth, we do wonder what's going on on the other side of the planet, but it's not like you can see it exactly. But on a ring, you're within the eye line of the ring arcing up into the sky. And for those of you who have read Halo Cryptum, Primordial, and what's the other one called? Silentium, that's it. But when they talk about the ring in the sky and the ancient humans that were living on the ring, more specifically Zeta Halo, from my memory of these books, it feels like you as the reader and the character being those ancient humans on the ring both share this interest of what's on the other side, what's beyond the boundary of the barriers that are holding you within the sides of the ring. It's all really interesting and thought-provoking stuff. But the next thing to think about is why does all of this fit within Halo's exploring elements? Now, don't get me wrong, there have been other parts of Halo that have really captured my imagination over the years, and I, I always go back to thinking about when we landed on Requiem on Halo 4 on the second mission, and going out and seeing those giant pillars in the sky and the valleys and the canyons to the other side. I loved how that part really captured my imagination, but the one thing I always held problem with that when it came to the game is that I couldn't go on that other side. I never went near that area, and this big, what felt like a huge world is just a kind of canvas that's just there, painted on. But with Halo Infinite, even though people have issue with some of the graphics and the design things, such as the hexagonal pillars, you can still go to most of the places that you're seeing, and that's kind of one of the most invigorating parts of Halo Infinite, in my opinion. And to go back to practically all of Halo 1, 2, and 3, I remember going throughout all of these missions with a fine comb, trying to find every little, little secret, every bit about the game, and just observe every single bit of this world, because it was fascinating. I remember there's such areas in Halo Combat Evolves, like you can see on the screen now, that were just... You didn't need to go there, but because it was a new world, it was something you'd never experienced before, you just wanted to see it. It didn't matter if there was something there or not. Just being there and soaking up the world was just such a new and fun experience, especially when you're doing it with your friends. But okay, so now it leaves me with the question of what does this go along with? So, walking music in Halo. For those who don't know what I mean by walking music, it's not music that gets your blood pumping or gets you diving into the action. The, the, one of the problems I had with Halo 5's musical direction, it had lots of great songs, don't get me wrong, but the problem I had was that everything was just in your face. It was trying to get you all the time, but whereas in previous games, you had songs that were there just to supplement you and your exploration. That's why Through the Trees is such a good song obviously it calls back to walk through the woods or walk in the woods either or but that's what's so great about it and it's there to sort of supplement you exploring and it's also the parts where Halo doesn't need to fill the voids and doesn't need any music. We see this straight away once we exit the pelican on the gameplay demo for Halo Infinite. The game starts off quiet it's serene it just it lets you absorb the world the nature and all the other elements that come along with that and then when things start happening such as gunfire it starts to pump up and then when an event such as you going up the lift happens you experience the world and how it feels and i love that feeling 
So the idea that Halo hasn't been on a Halo ring in 13 years, at least on an FPS Halo game, is a really strange experience because I never actually stopped to think about it and it was only until today that I just the, the idea struck me and then I was like how bizarre is that? So this excites me tremendously and I think it should for you as well and that's kind of my point. Cranking out some... <laughs> I don't know why I use the word cranking, but exploring the world with your friends online. Just going around finding every little area you can. And a lot of people did this with Halo 3 ODST and just walking around and seeing what you could find naturally without having to go on YouTube or anything like that is such a fun experience. And just zipping around in a mongoose for hours talking rubbish to your friends. Halo Infinite's gonna be a lot of fun and newer games in the Halo franchise such as Halo 5 and to some extent Halo 4 don't really incentivize me to explore. The, sometimes they're really pretty, sometimes they do cool things and there are things to collect but the worlds themselves don't invigorate my imagination. So seeing the arc, seeing that in the sky is now something that's kind of sparking my imagination thinking what are the possibilities. Regardless of the graphics, I still think the game looks beautiful and I'm hyped to see what direction it goes in eventually. But I wanna know what you guys think. Is it cool that we're on a Halo ring again? And if there's anything from any of the classic Halo games that could return to Halo Infinite, what would you bring back? Personally for me, it needs to be the Scarab. The Scarab, the Scarab, the Scarab. And I'm glad we're on a Halo ring once again, just to hammer it home. Anyway, my name is Fletch. Thank you so much for listening to me ramble for however many minutes. I will see you on Saturday with a new Q&A video. And I'll see you then. To that. Subscribe now to Ultimate Halo for more unfreaking believable Halo content.